Welcome to Steve Thompson Polo. Hi everyone, Steve here. Are you struggling with your polo? Perhaps you've got issues with penalties or problems with consistency. Well, it's worth considering that every pro has two arms, two legs and a body. So why is it that they can do what they can and yet you can't? But you're both using the same body mechanics. Well, the answer to that is technique. And technique is governed by body type. So it's probably that it's not that you can't, it's just that you're using the wrong technique for your body type, or more likely, you're probably using somebody else's. Now in this video, we're gonna be looking at all of the top 10 hitting crimes. We're also gonna be looking at how the pros hit the ball. And then we're gonna be furnishing you with all of the tips necessary for you to put things right. Top tip number one. Are you one of these guys that cannot help themselves but hit the ball as hard and as fast as they can? If you are, then try this. These are just snowballs. They're made out of polystyrene. And I use them to stop people doing this, hitting hard and fast, because ultimately they're so lightweight, they just fly up and over your head. In all of crime correction, what you must be thinking about doing is creating a gymnastic body movement and the ball just happens to be in the way. Top tip number two. Do you have a swing technique that actually casts the energy out of the back of the stick? It's a common crime, but if you consider, when you hold a stick vertical, it's light because the energy is coming down to the bottom. When you tip it forward, it gets heavy because the energy has gone to the end and you feel it on the tendons of the forearm just there. Now this obviously isn't scientific, I've just placed a blue tube as a visual on this polar mallet to show where energy should be transferred to the ball. Because if you don't work with the energy in a mallet, when you swing, that will happen. The energy disappears out the back, leaving no energy in the stick, which will encourage a player to hit harder and faster instinctively because they know there's no energy. Ideally, you need to transfer it with the intention of swinging to the other side. Top tip number three. Are you a player that just hits with their arm as hard as they can? There are two types of people. There are people that hit with their arm and people that hit with their bodies. Take a look at these pros swinging the mallet with their bodies. They start with the chest to the right and they finish chest to the left. Their pelvis is connected to their shoulders and they will absolutely use all of the energy created and send it down to the ball. Top tip number four. The headlifters. It's a common crime of us all, and it's out of enthusiasm to see where the ball went, even before we've hit it. But consider for a second, the line of sight is generally 90 degrees to the face. You can place your chin down, but actually you're not in line until the chin touches the chest. And now you'll look at the alignment of the stick and the swing plane combined. So this is the crime, and this is where my head needs to be. So I need to be training the muscles at the back of my neck, and it's so much more important that I feel how it feels to be correct on the approach to a ball, so I know what I'm aspiring to. In all of these images, you'll see the guys looking down tubes, and they've hit the ball, and they're still looking down. Now here's a great tip. These are just bottle tops with colored paper or plasticine on them, and all you need to do is put a golf tee underneath and stick them into the ground. Well, don't you do it, that's called cheating. You need to get an assistant to do it so you don't know where the colours are. Once you've just done that, place a ball on top. And now your intention is to move the ball out of the way but consistently look down so you can see the colour that was underneath. So here I am heading to a ball with a colour underneath. My intention has changed from hitting it hard but hitting it out of the way so I look down to see the colour and I keep looking down until my shoulder tells me when to look up. Top tip number five. Do you suffer from wobbly stick syndrome? If you do, it's likely because you're pulling the forearm to pull the mallet behind you. Ideally, you want to be repelling the mallet with the left shoulder and using the body. If not, the forearm will just lead to imbalance. Ideally, you want to be moving the stick around using the body. So here's the tip. Drop the stick to the floor and place two fingers underneath so it creates a little shelf. If I now pull the stick with my forearm, I'll instantly get an imbalance because I have no strength. 
But look at the technique I should be using, which is repelling the right wrist with the left shoulder and using all of the body so the stick is perfectly balanced behind and I can choose my chosen height. Top tip number six. So here's a tip for the guys that collapse down towards the ball in their enthusiasm to just make it move forward. If you look at this mallet, it's a couple of inches off the floor. All mallets are effectively too short, but once I create elastic and send the energy down, the stick will grow in length. So here's a great exercise. First of all, swing your stick back and produce a pendulum, and then start to gather momentum and swing up and over once to start gathering speed and power you'll feel an energy surge at the bottom. Up and over again, so you start to become versatile in the saddle with the chest left and the chest right. Then swing the stick up to a vertical point with a moment of suspension, so all of the energy is still in the stick, with a big driving left shoulder. Draw the stick behind you until you feel a stretch under the armpit, and swing and surge the energy right the way down. So here's a couple of my students who had exactly the same issue. So they're going to extend the sticks forward and drop their first pendulum. They swing up and over once, up and over twice, up to a vertical, catch a smiley, a stretch, and focusing on their shoulder socket. Top tip number seven. So here we have the early swingers, the guys that hit the ball on the upwards part of the shot. The most powerful part of a pendulum is directly below the power source, which is the shoulder. So there's a couple of myths about where to hit the ball in relation to the horse, but actually this is about body type. Fee needs to hit this ball opposite her shoulder, but because she has a short torso, that means in relation to the horse it's by its girth. But Alex, who's much taller on the same horse, needs to be hitting in relation to the horse near his leg, but it is still opposite his shoulder. Top tip number eight. So here's an example of the guys that are swinging faster in an attempt for the ball to go further. The reality is that power comes from the amount of elasticity you create with the body and how much of it you can send down the mallet and the arm combined and transfer it to the ball. So all of these distances are based on a 9 o'clock, a 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock position. Imagine pointing a laser beam of light on your chest. For a medium shot, you'd point it 90 degrees to the horse. For a power shot, you'd need to try and point it 45 degrees to get maximum rotation of the pelvis. Have a look at these guys that I was training, all producing power and elastic. Once this guy has gone to his chosen reach behind, the pelvis and shoulders are joined together, the energy's in the stick head, and he's using all of his body and all of his elastic to transfer down to the ball. The most amount of power a human can create is by using all of the body. So this exercise shows a technique where you use the body, oh, hello Winston, where you use the body to heave the stick as if it has 100 kilos on it. This way you'll know what it is you're meant to be feeling like at the top and what it is you're meant to be feeling like at the bottom. When you put the structure back together, you'll know when you've arrived and you'll know when your next port of call is using the body rather than using the arm. Top tip number nine. So here are the equestrian guys that come to a polo environment trying to use an equestrian style. In order to hit a ball successfully, it's really important that you adhere to the physics and produce a half seat, which will give you versatility. Now nobody walks with parallel arms. Everybody has a natural swing across their body. An Apollo mallet when swung is perfect before the human interferes with it. So taking all of those points of physics to the training mat, have a look at what my pelvis needs to do in order to do a pendulum and also a basic forehand. Now here's a great exercise called a smiley grid and it creates versatility. These guys are learning to operate the stick around the body using their chest and producing a position that's versatile in the saddle. So the trick to it is you extend the sticks forward and drop a pendulum. Then you're going to catch a shape called a smiley and swing your first shot. 
If the body's correct, it will allow you to go to the near side and then you get more versatility to allow you to swing on the off side. Now the way you're going to achieve it is producing a half seat. And the way you do that is to first of all move back in the saddle. Roll forward onto the knees and then push away with the soles of the feet. Once you're in a half seat, you're going to be able to explore all of the planes around the horse without restriction. Now an extra tip for those coming with previous riding experience is this. A good half seat will have the feet parallel to the horse. The riders who have very developed calf muscles will turn their toes out. Now the problem with this situation is it has a massive restriction on the pelvis which stops the rider being able to get past the 10 o'clock position behind. And as we've identified, power is about height. So here's the toe turning out and yet what the toe wants to do is actually turn in. So have a look at this. I've put two blue lines on my legs and if you develop a half seat and learn to roll them in, you'll have much more versatility. Top tip number 10. The difference between a great hitter and an average hitter is commitment. If you adhere to the physics and understand them, when you approach the ball, the ball is just in the middle of something you're intending to do. And what that is, is producing a pendulum internally of any shot and any structure. For a pendulum to be true in a polo shot, whatever you look like at the front, you will ultimately look like the same behind as they're mirror images of each other. So here you'll see the start of the pendulum as I go for the reach the area of acceleration to contact and the area of deceleration finishing at the same height opposite. Again here is the reach and the start and the top of the pendulum. The acceleration part to contact and notice I'll finish at the same height opposite where I started. It is a true pendulum internally. So the tip here is don't be satisfied by just making contact. Approach the ball with conviction and commitment. The physics will always sort it out. Take a look now at Hazel Jackson hitting a 140 yard ball with just a basic pendulum. The ball is just in the way of something you intend to do. When it comes to equipment, the guys at Performance Polo are absolutely brilliant. Um, there is no such thing as one saddle fits all. You can use pads and blankets and all sorts of stuff, but ultimately you have to get your horse uh, comfortable and you need a, a saddle that you can play out of. Now they've developed these saddles that actually come with these, which is absolutely genius. So you can actually alter the size of the saddle tree based on the size of the horse. For more helpful tips and advice, visit and subscribe to Steve Thompson's YouTube channel, The Essential Guide to Polo, where you'll also find his other tutorial videos, or buy a copy of his best-selling book, How to Look Cool Whilst Learning Polo, which is packed with more top tips and information, and presents a step-by-step -step guide for you to discover and unlock your own hidden abilities. Or why not take a personal virtual lesson with Steve Thompson on his virtual coaching site? Here are the details. During this video, you'll have seen the training mat featured that was designed and developed by Steve Thompson. This allows a player to view all of the body requirements for swinging without restriction. These mats are excellent for the days you still want to accurately train your unique polo muscles but can't get access to a horse to practice on. Equally, they lend themselves perfectly for exercise or rehab post-injury and during the off-season. For details on how to purchase these mats, follow the link on the contact page at the end of this video. Steve Thompson Polo is delighted to announce the collaboration with Chucka Wellness. Chucka Wellness provides the leading training and movement methodology designed for the equestrian athlete to enhance suppleness, stability and strength in the saddle. Their services include one-to-one -one and team training on and offline. They have a virtual membership hub which includes workouts, warm-ups, stretching routines and nutritional advice to help you prepare you and your body for your busy polo or competition season. Pre-season training packages are available in the UK and abroad and you can find the contact details on the link at the end of this video. To contact Steve Thompson or to receive details on all of his products and services including how to look cool whilst learning polo, his exclusive training mat or book a live or virtual coaching session, email him steve at britishpoloacademy.com. 
For more information on Chukka Wellness, you can contact India Parker Smith on chukkawellness.co.uk. And for polo saddles and polo equipment, email Michael Husted on info at performance-polo.com. Thank you for watching Steve Thompson in action, and we look forward to assisting you with all your polo needs.